The range of WAGO Ethernet switches ensures scalability of your network infrastructure with outstanding electrical and mechanical characteristics. WAGO is continuously adding to the automation product family to better support our customers in controls and networking. The managed switch line is just another product line where this is being accomplished. The managed Ethernet switches feature eight copper ports, two or four fiber optic ports, as well as a serial port for setup and configuration. Setup and configuration can also be achieved through an Ethernet port using the command line interface or the web-based management tool. We will discuss the basic setup of the managed switches as well as the setup of the jet ring redundant networking in this video. Before we get started uh, with the web-based management tool, I just wanted to take a moment to show you the network setup that I have with regards to the hardware that I'm using for this video. I have the 852.303 managed Ethernet switch. We have our 750.880 controller as well as the 750.80.206 controller, the PFC200, um, in this network redundancy setup. And then I have the laptop connected to one of the ports as well so that I can interface using the web-based management tool um, and the command line interface. Okay, so we've connected the Ethernet switch power and we have connected it to our laptop as well as a WAGO controller. And I was just going to show you how to do a simple setup of one of the Ethernet switches, the Manage Ethernet switches. So in here I'm just going to come in, I'm using the default IP address on the device, which is 192.168.1.254. And then we'll be able to connect. You will see uh, the login screen here. And initially what we're going to do is look at the web-based management tool that's embedded on the device and which allows us just to use a browser to set up and configure various things on the managed Ethernet switches from WAGO. Um, at the end of this, uh, once we wrap up with the web-based management tool, I'll also show you quickly how to go into the command line interface as well. So again, in here, I'm just going to type in the username, which is going to be admin, and then password is WAGO. Again, these are the default settings and, of course, can be changed, the password on the switch itself. So from here you can see the system information with regards to like the host name on the device, the part number for it, uh, down here is the MAC ID, and again IP address settings and so forth. Um, again, this is just information about the status of the device. You can even see up here as a graphic that I can see which ports are active and in use right now. Um, so from here I'm going to go into my basic settings on the left hand side here and then I'm just going to go through these various connections here links. So general settings you can see in here we can set up the host name you can see this is default but of course we can manipulate that and change it. You can see here for your IP version 4 settings uh, the DHCP client um, is disabled by default you can enable this here so that if you had a DHCP server system, then you could have it assign an IP address to the managed switch itself. Again, this is the default. You could come in here, manipulate this information, and then click on apply and assign it a new one. Again, you'll also see this for version 6 below um, with regards to setting that up and changing it. In here we also have, you can see the jumbo frame here. And basically what this refers to is that when you have Ethernet frames with a pay payload greater than like 1500 bytes, uh, the jumbo frames option in here can help enhance the data transmission efficiency. So the bigger the frame size, the better the performance. And you can see the defaults on here, the 10 to 40. Um, I can come in and change the various ports on here individually, all of them. So from 1 to 10, for example, if I wanted to change that, I could do it from 1 to 5 I could do that and then come in and change let's just change it to a value here apply and then you would see that change um, applied to the various ports okay so again it's just simple setup different things you can do within the device to enhance your performance as far as communication um, from the SNTP side you can see here uh, we can come in and manually set a new date and time 
Um, you have your daylight savings time option in here as well. Um, you can also have the device set up to communicate with an NTP server. So if there was a server that you wanted to communicate with to update this information periodically, you could have that done here so that you wouldn't have to manually come in and set the date and time. It would update that information periodically here. Um, so again, you can set that up for the date and time on the device. So now we're going to go over to the management host tab. And what I can do here is uh, limit who has access to the device to make changes and so forth. So the default on here is there is no management host set. Um, so anybody can come in using something like Telnet or the web-based management tool and make changes. But I could come in here and put in, for example, the IP address of my laptop or service PC, apply now this device is the only device that can come in here and make those changes as far as the host settings on here and, and the device itself. Um, you can have up to three management hosts on here and um, again you can add and remove and things like that and just add them to the system. So I mean that's just the management host there. Uh, now I want to go into Mac management. So in here um, you can see the device itself but we can add devices to the network by, via MAC address and port um, through a static setting here. So we can actually put in the MAC ID of a device. Um, like I said earlier, I have a controller connected to it. Um, or you can just have it dynamically address or uh, assign the addresses to the ports on its own. So either way you can do that. I'm just going to do this real quick to show you. So again, for the controller, I have a Wago controller, an 880 in this case. And I'm just going to put the Wago MAC ID for the controller in here. And then when I add it to the table, we'll see it listed. So we can put in here VLAN ID 1, port 1 is what we're going to use, apply. And now when I come over here to my MAC table, I'll see the device listed here as static. Um, again, I could have it just on there as a dynamic type, and then as it starts to send um, the frames and packets back and forth, you would see it displayed here. Um, and you can select in here type. So as far as whether static, dynamic, by port, by MAC ID, whatever the case may be, you can list that here on the MAC table. Um, your aging time or age time set. Uh, here is where you can set the fast aging time of the ports. Um, again, um, you have different options here as far as that time range. Okay, so now we're going to go to refusal max settings. Um, and here, this is where we can manually uh, set or configure the MAC addresses, uh, the MAC address entries into here. Basically, the switch discards the packets destined for or originated from certain MAC addresses. Um, so again, that's what this review, refusal MAC setting allows you to do. Um, you can come in here, again, type in the MAC address that you want. Um, you can come in here and identify the VLAN ID if you want any or a specific one. Um, and then you just click apply and it adds it to this list. And again, the, the primary reason for this is just for filtering out frames with a specific source or destination MAC address. Okay, so from here we're going to go over to port mirroring. And basically port mirroring is used on a network switch to send a copy of network packets sent and received from one or a range of switch ports to a network monitoring connection on another switch port. Um, so basically we use this for uh, network devices that require some type of monitoring of network traffic, such as intrusion detection systems. So what we would do is come in here and say, like, you know, our, um, enable first our port monitoring, the monitor to port, it will say to 8. Um, and then what you can do in here is select, um, you know, different ways you want to set each one, or you can come in here and say, well, I want them all for, all of them are disabled ingress, monitoring egress, or both, um, or you can individually set them here as well. 
So, you know, we could say here for both, for example, and um, apply. And then we could see here that both, again, are going to this port 8, uh, again, for our monitoring. And that's basically it. Um, you would do this in your setup for your port mirroring. Uh, for port settings now, um, this is just a, kind of a overview of what the status is of the different settings as far as whether the port's enabled. You can see it here. Is it auto, half, full duplex, um, and things like that, whether flow control's on and off, and then whether or not you actually have a link connection here. Um, and then, of course, from here I can set, uh, let's say, 1 to 8 are enabled and let's say I wanted to just for example change this to full duplex and flow control on apply and then when I hit uh, refresh here you'll see what's occurred as far as the changes made speed and duplex communications flow control which uh, ports are active or down or whatever the case may be um, I can come over here now to this information and I can see um, the descriptions for the ports. I can edit and change these, uh, the names of this, uh, maybe to a specific branch of the network or specific devices or functionality on the machine. Um, you can see the status here as far as the normal operation, how long has it been up um, since the change is made, for example. So. Um, before I made those changes, um, it was for a couple of days because I had running was running tests on the nodes and everything here. So uh, you can see it's just refreshed because I made that change back here in the general settings. All right. So again, just the port settings in here, different things you can do, and you can also see it's copper or fiber as well there. Okay. So this is the basic settings for the WAGO managed Ethernet switch, again utilizing the web-based management tool. Uh, we're just going to take a few moments to talk about the command line interface and then after that we'll talk about the jet ring network redundancy, um, how that it works, um, how the setup is done within the managed switches from WAGO and how easy that is to set up and you can see the activity when we lose a connection in the jet ring. Okay, so now we're just going to take a few moments to discuss the command line interface. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use PuTTY um, to connect with Telnet. So I'm just going to load this. So you can see here's the IP address for the manage switch, the port we're going to utilize, and open. And there's different levels of access on here. Um, if you just start with the admin, okay, then we can do a few basic things. Um, this one allows you to execute limited commands with the command line interface. Oh, so something like let's just ping one of the devices on the network. And then we can see, you know, just some limited functionality. Now, of course, in the documentation for the managed switches, um, there's all the command line interface commands, levels, and things like that. Uh, another user level, if you will, that you can go into is if you click on, or excuse me, type in enable, um, it asks for a user. Again, we're going to do admin and then WAGO. And now you can see the display here uh, has changed. And this allows me to execute more powerful commands. And it's basically a privilege mode to allow you to do that. And again, there's a whole list of commands that you can utilize in here. Um, if I wanted to go into um, a configure mode where I wanted to change certain things in the configuration, then I could do that from here. I could just type in configure terminal. And now you can see the display has changed again. And now I can use those configure commands to change certain things in the configuration of the device. So again, you can either use this command line interface or you can use the simple web-based management tool as well. And both are well documented throughout the manual for the managed switches. Wago's managed switches offer several methods for configuring Ethernet ring topologies for increased reliability. In the event of a broken path due to a cable break or local power failure on one device, 
the system can reroute Ethernet packets using a secondary path. One of the high-speed recovery rings offered is the jet ring. JetRing automatically identifies one switch as the master of the network. When a cable break or a link fault occurs, JetRing will automatically use the backup path in a very short period of time. It has a fast recovery time of less than 300 milliseconds, and it's very easy to configure, as you will see in the web-based management tool in just a minute. Alright, so now we're going to go over to our advanced settings. Still in the web-based management tool here. We're going to take a look at our JetRing page. And what I'm going to do here is just enable this and apply. And then I'm going to plug in my network cable that loops back between my two controllers and back to the device. And now you can see that port 1 and port 2 are forwarding and port 7 in this case is blocking right now. Um, again we have this looped back on itself with a WAGO managed switch and two WAGO controllers and then if I see some type of failure in my connectivity to one of the devices okay and let's see refresh and now it's forwarding to port 7 and there's no connection on the port 1 now. Again if I return my connection now back to port 1 and now refresh you will see automatically we're using port 1 and 2 again and now we're blocking on port 7. So it's that easy. You just simply come in and enable your port forwarding and then you'll see here that when it loops back to the through this port here it says okay I'm blocking this port because it looped back to that one and then we will you know redirect if there's a failure in the network connection so this setup is basically what you saw in the previous discussion in the slide um, where it showed multiple controllers looping back to a port um, through the managed ethernet switch from WAGO Okay, thank you for taking the time to view this video regarding the WAGO managed switches and the basic setup of those switches, um, as well as the JetRing network redundancy setup. Further information will be coming out in other videos regarding network redundancy and the things that you can do. Thanks again for your time and hopefully you found this video informative.